man, I am just cranking out these mini series. I'm really excited about this one. Remember back when we did the magnetic door locks? After that video, I had a lot of people asking me if I could do an RFID card reader to go along with the door locks. That'd be cool. Well, guess what? I did it. You want to see it? Of course you do. I'm not a very good Arduino sketch writer, but I know a good Arduino sketch when I see one. And the one we're going to use today is a good one. This is it. ESP RFID. So you go to this repository and download the zip file. Then inside here, go to the bin folder. So I open up my flash easy folder and then I just take this firmware.bin and I put it in there. Now let's get ready to flash. For this project, I'm going to use a Node MCU board. The reason I'm doing that is because the door locks run on 12 volts and the Node MCU board runs on 12 volts. I could use something like a D1 Mini, but then I'd have to supply a 5 volt power supply. Now the one tricky thing about the Node MCU board though is that it needs a special driver because of the USB to serial converter chip that it has on the board. It's not hard to find though. The driver that you need is this CP210X. They have versions here for every operating system you could want. I'm just going to grab the Windows 10 version. Save, open, extract, yada yada, bada bing, x64 installer, next, finish, and done. Now we can go back to our flash easy folder, plug in the node MCU board to your computer. Now click flash easy, then click on firmware.bin and click flash and away you go. That's done. Once you get it flashed, it goes into an AP or access point mode. So you can connect to it with a Wi-Fi device, put in all your network settings, etc. Now we can look for the Wi-Fi network that the node MCU board is broadcasting. And there it is. It'll be ESP RFID something. So we connect to that, then we open a browser, and you can either go to 192.168.4.1, or you can go to ESPRFID.local. Either one should work. The default password is admin, so the first time you log in, use admin. This is what the startup web UI looks like. On this page, the first thing we want to do is go to the settings and the network settings and put in our Wi-Fi information. Mine's already there. Now you're going to want to go to the hardware settings. And if you're using the same RFID reader that I am, which is this RC522, then you select that. And there are a couple other choices too. This SPI port was by default set to GPIO 0. I changed mine to GPIO 15 just because that put all of the wires in a line. GPIO 15 is D8 on the Node MCU board. And since the other pins that we needed to connect were 5, 6, and 7, I made it GPIO 15 so that we could use pin 8. There's also a relay pin, which means you could actually put a relay with this board and it could directly connect or disconnect your electronic locks. So instead of using the Sonoff SV like I did before, you could just use this and connect a relay to one of the extra GPIO pins. Whenever you make changes, hit save. It'll give you this message down here that'll give you a chance to make those changes permanent. But you can go through several menus and make changes and then finalize them all at the end. General settings is where you can put in a new admin password and you can also put in a host name if you want something different than the default. This is what will show up in your router. I'm actually going to set mine to restart every 30 days. I've definitely had problems with some ESP8266 boards if they don't get restarted every once in a while. Now in the MQTT tab, you put in all of your broker information, the IP address, the username, password if you use it, and again, hit save. On the last page, you can put in your time zone. For now, that's all. We're going to preview these changes, and we're going to hit save and reboot. When it's done, you get a page that looks like this. Hit the try to reconnect ESP. Come on, baby. There we go. Now I put in the new user, the new admin password, and we should be good. Let's get the pins connected. On the GitHub page, you'll see this pin layout chart. The two columns we care about right now are the 522 column and the node MCU column. This is probably going to be a little hard for you to see. This first pin over here is the SDA pin. So according to the chart, the SDA pin goes to D8. That's right here. The pin next to that one is the clock pin. That one goes to D5 on the node MCU. Right here. The next one is the MOSI pin. That's master out slave in. 
That one goes to D7 on the Node MCU, right there. For the next one, I use the yellow wire, and it's on the MISO pin. That's master in, slave out. And it goes to D6. We can skip the next pin. Then we have a ground pin. We can skip the next pin, which is a reset pin. And then the last one is three volts. And that's it. It's all connected. Next thing we're going to do is add some users. So I've got six different tags, three cards and three keychains. I want each one to be assigned to a different member of the house. So to assign a user to a specific tag ID number, we go to the users tab and then you can either hit new user or you can just scan your tag. When you scan your tag, it brings up the ID. I can do the username, access type, admin. Valid until 2038. Yeah, that should do. Save changes. Great. So that one's mine. Okay, so there you go. So now when we scan one of these, it should tell us who it is. So there it says Justin. So that's how you can add users. Pretty nice. To get maximum use out of these RFID readers, I made a couple of automations. This first one is for the office lock. Let's walk through. I set it so the trigger is an MQTT message on this topic, which is our ESP RFID. And I set the payload to Justin or Janice. Only my RFID or my wife's RFID will open the office lock. And I want it to toggle. That way I can lock the door with my RFID or unlock the door with my RFID. Piece of cake. The next one is the shop lock. This one exists on a different Node MCU board. So the topic is different. I just called it ESP RFID 2. This automation is set up so that anytime anyone with an RFID scans it at the shop door, it'll open. Well, it'll toggle on or off, open or closed, locked or unlocked. That way any of the kids or my wife and I can use our RFIDs to open the door or lock the door when we leave. Pretty cool. Let's see how it works. Here's my RFID tag. You see the office lock? Locked. Scan it again, and it unlocks. It's beautiful. Well, that's it. The ESP RFID scanner. For only a few dollars, you can put together your own badge scanning entry system. The kids aren't too keen yet on having these RFIDs implanted in their bodies. They must have forgot that dad can put them to sleep and implant them surgically. That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, adios. You've seen this screen before.